Now I asked you at the beginning to um, pull open Desmos, so I want you, if you haven't already, to do that now. Because these guys here, I want us to look at these. We've done some algebra, that's nice. But I want to see what's going on because there's an important visual relationship between a function and its inverse that I want to get at. So here's what we'll do. Once you've got that open there, and I'm going to take a second to catch up, but can you just graph the first example? Can you input the first function and also input its inverse? Can you do that? Can you do both those for me? You should have them written down by now, so I'm going to pull this. Hmm. So if you didn't have the equations down, it's 3x minus 1 is the first one, the original, and then a third of x plus 1, right? Got it. <coughs> Waiting. Now, what I'd love you to do is, because I want you to not worry too much about the graphing of it, that's why I got you to pull open Desmos, but I would love you, once you're looking at this, draw like a rough version of this in your book so that when we've, we're, you know, we've closed this down, you'll be able to look back at your notes and you'll be like, oh, that's what we were talking about. So it doesn't have to be beautifully accurate, but it does need to show basically what's going on here. So how do you do a fraction? Um, just press the divide button. It should give you a fraction, I think. Does it do it? Oh, right, yeah, yeah. Yep, cool. Um, or on your keyboard, the, yeah, the backslash? I think it's the backslash. I never remember which one's back and which one's forward. Um, I think it's the backslash. We'll give you division. Okay. That would be better. It's the, it's the increasing function that... But they're both going forward. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, find the divide button, okay? Do you have this on your screen? Yes. Yeah, okay. Now, one shot of, what I want you to notice is these two functions, right? Um, one is the, func the original, it's the green one for me, right? And the other one is the inverse, okay? Now, before I sort of move off of these, do you notice that the, the whole green is the inverse of the whole purple? But you also have within the function itself, see how you've got a minus one and then a plus one? You're like, oh, they, they undo each other, right? And you, this is why I wrote this as a third rather than as dividing by three. That multiplied by three and that a third, they also undo each other, right? So you sort of get this shape happening, right? Now, what I'd love you to add on to there, just like start a new line, and all I want you to write in is the single letter X. Can you do that for me? Right? Just type in the letter X. Oh, oh this looks so goes through the X. Now, did you notice... There's a relationship between the function, which I've got in green, its inverse, and also this dotted line y equals x, right? You'll be able to see that relationship if, unlike me, which I cannot do with the projector, if you pick up your screen and turn it 45 degrees. Can you do it so that this y equals x, turn it around so that y equals x line, my one which is dotted, so it's straight up and down. Can you see the relationship between the function and its inverse, right? So you can just turn your head if you like, right? Um, that's all I can do with this thing. So do you notice, this is symmetrical, isn't it, right? Y equals x is kind of like your line of symmetry. And then to go from one to the other, it sort of flips over, yeah? Okay, now you can see I've also prepared this earlier. That was only the first function in inverse. Can you do the second function and its inverse? It was x cubed plus two. And there's also the cube root of x minus 2. You might not know where the cube root button is. So when you go to, um, when you go and get your keyboard down here, if you go over to the right-hand side to functions, and then if you click, oh, sorry, I'm sort of like, there we go. Um, if you go over to miscellaneous here, you get this guy right over here on the right-hand side. You can see there's a square root. It's actually a radical sign. And then there's like, this is not high resolution enough, but that's an M. You can pick any root that you like, not just the square root. You can put a 3 in there, and it'll give you the cube root. Okay? So go ahead, find that function, and then you'll be able to draw this as well. You may like to get rid of um, those two original functions, because your graph's going to get super busy super fast. But maybe just leave y equals x there. Okay, guys, um, I know you're still drawing. That's okay. I will give you some time to continue drawing, but can I ask you to put your pens down momentarily and look up? because I want to try and unpack some of the stuff that's going on here and why it's happening, okay? And then you will be able to continue going, right? Can you just pen out of hands for a minute and look up? 
Just waiting on... Okay, great. So, what's going on here? What have we just determined? Well, we've said, and I know I've covered it, but you've got it there in your notes. If you want to go from a function to its inverse, then you can do something with algebra. You can take all your x's and swap them for y's and also take all your y's and swap them for x's, right? And that will give you the equations that you want. But if you know what the picture looks like, you know how we spend a lot of time taking, here's a function, and then tell me what the square root of that thing looks like, or tell me what the uh, absolute value of that looks like, right? If you want to look at it visually, to go from, which one's the original function here? It's the red one, yeah? There's x cubed plus 2. If you take this function, right? and you have y equals x as well, then the inverse is a reflection, right? You can see it reflecting across that line. If you sort of turn your head, it's like, oh, it's sort of like a, what is that? It's like a radish looking thing, or a vase, or, or like an upside down porn chess piece from like, oh, yeah. anyway, so yeah, you get the idea, right? Now, the important thing for you to understand is, why is this happening? Like, it's not just, oh, that's nice, but there's a reason for it, right? I want you to think about some of the points that you've got here. For instance, uh, like this point right here, what are its coordinates? Two. This one here? Zero. It's 0, comma 2. That's the original one, right? But then algebraically what we said was everywhere you see an x, you swap it for a y. And everywhere you've got a y, you swap it for an x. So what this turns into when you think about the inverse is not 0, comma 2, but zero. 2, comma 0. Now see where that is? There it is, right? So in other words, this guy, what it does is it kind of like jumps over. It goes whoop over there, right? Pick another point. Um, uh, that looks roughly, uh, just eyeball it, right? That's, actually no, it's not roughly, I think it's exactly, uh, no, maybe it's not. That's going to be three, no, sorry, that's one and a half, actually. One and a half, all the way up to, what's that? Five and a half-ish, okay? One and a half, five and a half. What is that converting into? Well, instead of, I'll write it down, instead of one and a half, five and a half, I'm going to switch, right? So yeah, five and a half. One and a half. Now, where is that? That looks like it's going to be here, right? So do you see it went from over here and it sort of went across. Do you see the line that it sort of creates, right? Now, this is happening for every single point on the graph, right? This is the original one, the straight lines, right? I actually should have done this first because it has nicer points, okay? Every single point, like 3, 8, moves over to its inverse point where you swap the x and the y, right? Everything moves over except for one point. There's one point on the original and exactly one that doesn't move anywhere. Which where one is it? Meet. Yeah, very good. Where they meet, right? Now, actually, I kind of lied. I said it doesn't go anywhere, but it does. A half-half yeah. goes to, it goes to a half-half. That's why it's exactly where it is, right? So if you go back to the cubic, you can see the same thing happens, right? See this guy down here? I'm, I don't know, what is that? Negative one and a half, negative one and a half, ish, right? Um, the x corner and the y corner are the same, so when it flips over, you just stay there, right? Does that make sense? So that is why this reflection is happening across. Now, underneath, I'm going to mute this now. Underneath where you wrote this, algebraically, right? This is what we did with the algebra. But then we graphed it and we saw visually, visually, there is also a relationship, right? Namely, that f of x, if you start from that, um, you take a reflection across y equals x to get the inverse, right? So I can say, I'll write it in the right colors, the inverse f of x is a reflection of the original function, is a reflection What's it a reflection across again? What line? X. Y equals x, right? Y equals x, that's the place we're reflecting across. Okay. Mm -hmm. Stay put. Okay. Now, um, one more thing to say before I let you guys have a bit of a um, play with this, and you can see over on the right hand side I've written in exercise 2H, um, this part that we've just sort of covered, we'll, we'll take you through those first three questions at the top, later on we're going to need to learn some more stuff to do the rest of that exercise. Um, but you remember, right at the beginning I said we're mainly going to focus on functions 
relations kind of hang on for the ride, right? But you guys already know a whole bunch of relations and you can do exactly the same thing here, okay? I'm just going to show you this one and then you can have a play with it, okay? Bring this back down. Stay. There we go. <laughs> Reflexes, okay. It's got a spot that it likes. I'm gonna find it eventually. Stay. Okay. So. There we go. <laughs> it's happened to me before. Okay, so for example, this guy here. Have a look at this guy here, right? This is not a function, is it? What, what is it that makes it a relation, by the way? Vertical line test. Yeah, there was a test that we used. We called it the vertical line test because when you take said vertical line, if you can put it somewhere on the graph and it hits twice. More, more than once, in this case twice, you're like, well, oh, there's a point it hits twice. Actually, there's a whole bunch of them. You're like, oh, it fails, not a function, okay? But if we take this, right? Here's x squared plus y minus two all squared. What does that tell you, by the way, that left-hand side? What information do you get from that? The radius. Uh, we'll get the radius from the right-hand side. What do we get from the left-hand side? Center. It's the center, which in this case is, uh, it's, it's got to have coordinates, right? So it's zero, 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 two. zero, two. Yeah, that's where the center is. So there's the center. Um, the radius is, of course, look, look. Two. There's a four there, so that's two squared, so that's the radius of two, right? What happens when you swap everything around? I want you to think about it for a second. You can see here, I've done the algebra, but I don't want to show it to you just yet. What do you predict will happen? Because you did this already for a few times, and you saw the visual effect, right? If you put on the other circle, there he is, right? Do you see, does it match with what you expected? You see if you turn your head and you're like, oh, there's the reflection, right? And also there are the, in this case, not one, but two spots that don't, don't go anywhere, right? See, there's the origin, zero, zero just becomes zero, zero, and that's, um, that's one, one, right? And it just becomes itself, okay? So um, this, is an in, this is a relation and it's inverse relation. We can do this, they're just not gonna be mainly our focus. Yeah. Uh, which spot? Oh, sorry. No, you're, you're exactly right. That's two, two. I was just looking at the grid lines and getting confused. Okay.